Your mechanic calls. Your airplane is ready to pick up from the shop. What are your responsibilities as owner and pilot? This time in the ABS hangar, post maintenance test flight. As an aircraft owner or pilot picking up an airplane from the shop, you have many responsibilities. Returning an airplane to service is a partnership between mechanics and pilots, a shared responsibility. There was a time when all shops would conduct a thorough test flight before calling the owner to get the airplane. My earliest flying memory is riding in the back seat of what must have been a Cessna 172 with my dad, an AMP and commercial pilot, flying a test flight after a simple job like an oil change. Today's reality is that your airplane may not have been flown before you arrive to take it home. Even if it has, in a very real sense, you are a test pilot when you accept an airplane from the shop. So how do you prepare for aircraft acceptance? First, schedule the time it takes to ensure the work is complete and the airplane is airworthy. Plan on taking at least half a day and not on a day you expect to take the airplane on a trip or you have anywhere else you need to be. Don't put yourself under time pressure and certainly don't tempt yourself to rationalize away abnormalities because you need the airplane for something else that day. Pre-flight the airplane like you are taking an FAA checkride with an examiner evaluating your every move. But even before you inspect the airplane, start with the paperwork. FAR 43.9 describes the requirements to return an airplane to service after a maintenance event. There must be a logbook entry that includes a description of all work performed. The entry must include the date work was performed and legibly the name of the person who performed the work. Lastly, the log entry must include the name and certificate number of the person who performed the work. This must be a certificated mechanic who performed the work or who personally inspected the work and determined it was done correctly, or in the case of approved owner performed maintenance, the name, signature, and pilot certificate number of the aircraft owner. The signature and certificate number make up the approval for returning the aircraft to service, according to the FAA. If the airplane underwent a required inspection, such as an annual, the logbook must be endorsed with a certification statement with specific wording from the regulations. The entry must have the date of the inspection and the aircraft's total time in service. This is for items requiring repetitive inspection based on time in service, such as some airworthiness directives. Lastly, the logbook entry must contain the signature, certificate number, and kind of certificate that person holds. This will usually be an AMP or IA depending on the type of inspection, although in a few cases aircraft owners have been authorized to perform inspections required by an airworthiness directive. Again, the signature and certificate number are considered the approval for returning the aircraft to service. Part 43 of the Federal Air Regulations tells us who is authorized to perform maintenance on an aircraft. But Part 91 of the regulations makes the owner or operator primarily responsible for ensuring the airplane is maintained properly, including compliance with airworthiness directives per Part 39 regulations. FAR 91.3 makes the pilot in command the final authority as to the operation of the aircraft and the pilot in command is responsible for determining whether the aircraft is in condition for safe flight. Since you will be flying the airplane, take the time needed to ensure the documentation is complete and properly endorsed for return to service before you fly. You cannot wait until after a test flight for the logbooks to be endorsed. And you can't accept the airplane if the mechanic tells you he'll send you a logbook sticker in the mail. For the airplane to be airworthy, you, 
the owner or pilot in command must ensure the work is correctly and completely documented. With the logbooks complete, now check the paperwork associated with the airplane. In addition to the required documents, ensure all required placards around the airplane, especially any new ones added during the maintenance event. Check that all required supplements are in the pilot's operating handbook, including any for equipment added during the shop visit. The POH and other required manuals need to be in the airplane. Any software updates that were part of the scope of work should be installed. This is common with modern panel instrumentation, navigators, and autopilots. And check that the navigational and other databases are current, or update them as required. Now it's time to give the airplane that intensive pre-flight inspection we talked about earlier. Use the checklist. Inspect part of the airplane, the right wing for example, then refer to the checklist to ensure you did not miss anything on that part. Then move on to the next area. Between periodic glances at the checklist for verification, your eyes should be focused on the airplane, not your handbook. Pay special attention to looking for any fuel, oil, or brake fluid leaks in the engine compartment and underneath the airplane. And look especially closely at new modifications or where work has been performed during the shop visit. It helps to create a test plan for your acceptance flight so you don't forget anything when you get to the airplane. This is especially useful if you need to test a particular item. This is the flight test plan for when the engine was overhauled on the ABS Air Safety Foundation Bonanza. The installation shop had made the first flight, so the acceptance flight focused on gathering data and ensuring everything worked the way it did before the engine was removed for overhaul. Anytime work has been done in the engine compartment, begin your acceptance flight with a short engine run. Afterward, shut it down and take another look under the cowling and under the airplane for any signs of leaks. Also look for any sign the engine vibration has loosened or moved anything. Only after doing all these things are you ready to test fly the airplane. Staying close to the airport, preferably high above the traffic pattern within gliding distance of the runway, complete your test plan. Here are some do's and don'ts for test flying your airplane. Do conduct the flight in good visual conditions. Include essential crew only. Bring along the mechanic if you can, and if you need someone to manage data collection, that's fine. Otherwise, don't put others at risk on your test flight. Use the full runway length for takeoff and climb and circle close to the airport, just in case. Monitor and record data carefully, but don't let it distract you from flying the airplane. And keep the flight as short as possible, no more than 20 to 30 minutes unless it takes more time to accomplish your test profile. If it will take much more time than that, split it into more than one test flight. You're close to the airport so you can land at the first sign of any anomaly. Otherwise, after 20 minutes to half an hour, land, shut down, and conduct another leak and vibration check. Doing this over the airport and coming back for a last check before leaving the area gives you the opportunity to discuss any discrepancies with the mechanic who did the work. Give the airplane one more good pre-flight inspection, then make the flight home a shakedown cruise on a good day in VMC collecting more data as you go. Some things not to do on your acceptance flight include don't conduct your test flight in instrument conditions, high winds, nighttime, or other challenging conditions. Don't conduct your first test flight on your way home. Don't miss the chance to review anything you find with a mechanic. And flying home you'll be more likely to dismiss and defer any problems you might find. Even more importantly, don't begin a business or family trip from the maintenance facility. Take the time needed to make sure everything is right. 
even circling above the airport, it's tempting to rationalize away discrepancies, especially if you've been without the airplane for a long time. So don't put yourself under the artificial stress of a time limit or a deadline to accept the airplane from the shop. Accepting an airplane after maintenance, inspection, repair, or modification is a team effort involving both the mechanic and the owner pilot. For greatest success, plan and conduct a thorough post-maintenance test flight. There's much more to learn in the ABS Online Learning Center. Log in or become a member at bonanza.org. Don't miss another edition of the ABS Hangar. Subscribe to the American Bonanza Society YouTube channel. We'll see you next time in the ABS Hangar.